Anyway, welcome back to the Coach's Show with Manager Blake Lolly for episode number six. Thanks again for doing this, Blake. Yeah, no problem. Look forward to it. Yeah, we're coming toward the uh, the end of the first half here. A um, lot of success in the first half. Gunning to be 10 games over. Had a ton of success in 2021, yeah. right? Um, what were some similarities between that team and this team in terms of the actual players in the field and then your coaching staff as well? Um, coaching staff, you know, uh, Jeff Bajanero was there with me. Um, that year I had uh, Jorge Cortez, Rick Short started the year, um, and then uh, he went up as a hitting coach in the major leagues. But, um, you know, I, I a lot of similarities. You know, I've worked with Doug Drabeck in the past, and he was here last year. Um, we worked together in Double A. Um, having him and Jeff, and then Travis, you know, stepping in as a hitting guy, working with Mark is also a hitting guy and coaching third. Um, this is one of the best staffs that I think you could assemble in the minor leagues. Yeah. I mean, um, you know, when I say that, I, I, I speak from my end on what they do for me every day, but really what I'm doing is speaking from the players. Mm -hmm. And, like, I don't think there's a guy that they can't go to or that doesn't have something covered. I mean, I, I truly believe that with the knowledge on, on my staff that if anyone has anything, there's someone that can, can help them with it. Let's talk starting pitching for a moment. Had some really good starting pitching beginning of the year. It's gone on and off, I think, throughout. But some highlights, Blake Walston was top five in ERA throughout most of the uh, first half. Slade Zaccone, top two in strikeouts at the time of recording. Um, what are some things you've liked out of our starting pitching this year? Well, I mean, you know, number one, they're young. Yeah. They're, they're, they're young, they got good arms, and uh, I like the way they all compete. Um, you know, uh, you said Blake, how, how really good of a first half he's had. Um, you know, not as good of late, but because of the competitor he is and, you know, the stuff. Like, you know, the other night he, he gave us a chance. We won yeah. that game, and he ended up getting through five with not his best stuff, and he it, they compete. And uh, anytime, you get, you know, you got, you got starters with good stuff that compete, you, you're going to like a lot of the outcomes. Describe your offense in three words. Can score quick. That was a good, that's a great way to put it. Yeah. But at the same time, a team that doesn't hit a lot of home runs, right? So right. expand on that a little bit. Uh, we get a lot of you, hit. You could have done it in two with just can score. Can score. <laughs> I mean, yeah, they, they score a lot, right? Um, yeah. How we do it, we have good at bats from top to bottom. Um, we get on base. We're not afraid to take our walks. We don't strike out. Um, you know, we, 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 we string together multiple hits, and then there's usually a big blow in there somewhere. Like you said, not a ton of home runs, but, um, you know, we hit the ball hard and we hit it all over the field. And it, it really is a one through nine effort. Um, they're, 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 you're an opposing pitcher. There, there's no you're going over the game plan to face us. I can't imagine you're sitting in the office going, man, there's a hole here, let's get to it. Let's touch on this too. So 2021, a lot of offensive success as well. You're the youngest manager right now in the PCL. That probably helped you in 2021. How has that helped you this year to connect and coach uh, some of these younger guys as well? Um, you know, I, it, age is one of those things I never really think of. I just, I, I, I try to come to the field and, and, and have fun and joke around and be prepared. and. You know, I, I expect everything out of my players that, you know, I expect out of myself. And, uh, you know, I, I, I think we have a fun environment here. We're always laughing, joking around, but they're a very well-prepared team. And, uh, you know, most of that credit goes to them. Mm -hmm. I mean, they put a lot in to, to what goes into a game every night. And, um, you know, I guess being younger can, can – uh, can help relate a little bit, but not so much. I still, we still talk about old TV shows and old players, and these guys, they, they have no clue. They're a little bit, yeah, they're yeah, much younger. Yeah. yeah. Um, we're going to do some quick hitters, all right? So, your pregame routine, is that all right, first of all? Yeah. Your pregame routine as a manager versus as a player, is it the same or is it different? Um, I'd say the only thing that's really different about it is it was more physical as right. a player. Yeah. You know, uh, I always got to the field really early. Um, I'd pick up my lunch on the way in, probably get here 11 or 12, get into my shorts and T-shirt, eat lunch, and then, I, you know, I'd start my day, whether weight room. I was always an early cage guy. I liked being in there and out before anyone else, you know, got in. Um, 
And, you know, I'm kind of the same as a manager. I'm here pretty early in the morning, you know, probably 10, 10 10.30, you know, for a 6.35 game. And um, I do get a workout in, but it's it's, it's not to perform on the field. And uh, then I have lunch. I usually, you know, I I do the lineups and stuff the night before. um, But then I go back over it and I, I look if there's any ways that, you know, we can help these guys have success and in certain matchups or whatnot, go over the pitching a lot, who needs to throw, um, where we can use them, stuff like that. And uh, really it's just my goal now is to, to be prepared so that the players can have success. And um, that, that's, that's my goal. That's, that's why I'm here. We're here to help the players. And uh, that's kind of what my day goes around. What's well, a good point? I mean, so you touched on it. It's a 12-hour day for you. Yeah. So I think fans sometimes don't understand. You don't show up an hour before right. and manage the game. It, yeah. it, there's a lot that goes into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Um, it's a job. Yeah. It's a great job. Right. And, uh, you know, I, I totally understand that people look at it as a game mm-hmm. and, you know, not probably a, a, a real job. Right. <laughs> but it's 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 a job. It's a lot of hours. and. And uh, it's every single day. There's there's no off days. There re- there really isn't. One superstition you've had as a player and now as a manager. Have any carried over at all? Man. How about we, we can just do one superstition you've had as a as a player? As a player. As a player. You know, probably probably just the little things like you know if I was knocking down some hits I'd probably eat the same thing for lunch right. the next day yeah. but not like I wasn't very I, major, I wasn't yeah. real superstitious um you know I I being a catcher it's 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 kind of hard because yeah but what about at the plate I think okay at the plate, can relate at, the plate. At, at the plate you can relate right yeah. um yeah, you knock down a couple of hits, yeah. probably eating the same thing. But as a catcher, it was always like, yeah, but if you knock down a couple of hits, but we gave up six and lost, you felt responsible for that. Really? You felt responsible for that as a catcher? 100%. Um, yeah, 100%. Why is that? Uh, I think you take pride in, like, you know, all these guys got good stuff on the mound. And I think I took pride in, like, calling a game yeah. and, and, and doing that. So. You know, I, I paid attention big time to like my catcher's ERA. Yeah. Like, what? what how do we do when when I caught? And what was the win loss record mm-hmm. when I caught? And you know, if I was getting a couple hits a night, but we were five and fifteen right. when I was behind the plate, like, not a lot to be superstitious about. Right. <laughs> right. So I, I wasn't real superstitious. I, I was superstitious in my routine. Yeah. I, if I wasn't here by eleven or twelve, I, I felt late. Which isn't superstitious, I think, at that point. That's just a routine. And right. It's healthy to have. But, but I, I, I stuck to my routine. Um, first thing you're doing after after a game. Right First now? thing you want to do. Yeah. Uh, There's one correct answer, I think. I yeah. I think, you know, I like having a beer. Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm saying, I was going to say do the post-game interview with me. You do that. You knock that out. Yeah, I do that. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's uh, that and then the beer. Yeah, no, I usually have it where your camera can't see it. Are you serious? Yeah, it's right to the right, but yeah, see, that's, no, I'm just, I'm just messing around. Oh. Um, no, after the game, you know, um, you know, we, we shake hands a good bit after a win, and, uh, you know, if we lose, we, we, we got a short-term memory, we, we maybe give it a 10 minutes of a, like, gosh, what was that? Yeah. But, you know, for the most part, it's, it's, uh. It's a good time. It's ha- hanging out with the staff. We, we, we do reports, and uh, we get ready for the next day. Yeah, I mean, a lot of it, too, is, like, there's 150 games in a season, so these guys aren't going to put too much stock into, you know, we just lost a tough one in April, right? Yeah, and you know what? I, I think some people look for that. Right. Like, outsiders look for that. Like, why aren't you more upset? You dropped four in a row and it's well we, we go back out there every yeah. single night you yeah. know what I mean it's not a once a week thing mm-hmm. so we, we, and and we don't make if we do my theory is if we do things right from the start we shouldn't have to make drastic changes throughout the year mm-hmm. so if we drop four straight it's not some new game plan that we're coming up with we stick to if we did it right from the start we know what success is and some nights it's just hard to, to, to pull off so um and I, I can honestly say there hasn't been a game this year where we've changed 
you know, what we try to do as a team and what our identity is. At the same time, there's minor adjustments to make with certain yeah, players, right? And, 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 yeah, with certain players. Yeah. I mean, it, there's not a day that goes by that everyone in there isn't trying to get better, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, But I would say most of the adjustments come, like, pitch to pitch. Yeah. Not so much game to game. Okay. Um, good, good players find a way to adjust throughout the game, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and and the guys have 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 done great with it. Well, these haven't really been quick hitters, but uh, your favorite sports team? Pittsburgh Steelers. Pittsburgh Steelers. Hey, no brainer. No brainer. I You're mean, I'm sure a lot of the the people watching this yeah. are, are with me on that. Yeah, yeah, a lot yeah. of Steelers fans. Big, yeah, big market. Yeah. Um, your favorite sports memory as a fan? Whew. Um, I'll tell you what. Um, one of the one of the coolest baseball games. Um, I, I'll, I'll say two. Um, one of the coolest baseball games I was out uh, as a kid um, was NLCS Pirates. Doug Drabeck was on that team. Uh, they were playing the Cardinals. Um, I believe it was the NLCS it was playoffs or, or to get in big game and Lee Smith was uh, closing for St. Louis like I said if I said that name my players <laughs> You're had, right. had no clue but Lee Smith was, was yeah. the guy and Barry Bonds you know hit a home run to uh, walk it off and the Patton just swung and stood at home plate with his arms up Bonilla is running on the payoff pitch Bonds with a drive deep right field go ball it's gone with Classic, the heel up yeah. and the stadium everyone just stood there felt like for an hour yeah and I, I remember like leaving that night as uh i don't know how old i was maybe eight nine years old thinking like wow like that, it was something that stuck with me um for a long time and then um you know i actually i thought it was really cool last year um i was traveling around throughout the whole organization mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of the front office from the Arizona Diamondbacks, we went to Las Vegas to watch that playoff series in Vegas last year. And Josh Barfield, our farm director, um, you know, night one, we were um, up top eating food and stuff like that while the team was getting ready. And he said, you know, we're, we're not working this weekend, we're fans. Mm -hmm. And I, I remember sitting in the stands that weekend watching the Reno Aces you know, battle their, their butts off and, uh, you know, win the PCL on Friday night and and then uh, play on Sunday came up a little short. But sitting there as a fan and, and not not working, but like rooting these guys on was a really, really fun weekend uh, for me. So I, I'll say those two. Good second half puts him in that position uh, this year as well. That's Blake Lolly for our Coaches Show, episode number six.